What is your childhood memory that you thought was normal but realized it was traumatic later in your life? My mom leaving me at different places with different people for months at a time. Or when we would be driving I remember there would be times where she would tell me about the school she was going to take me to and that I would live there. I remember her describing the horses they had, lies, and how much I would love it. She never ended up taking me there but would always talk about it like it was some magical place. Found out from my uncle years later it was an orphanage. Only reason she didn't end up taking me is because he threatened to kill her if she did. When I was in the second grade my older sister came into the bathroom while I was taking a bath to play with my toys with me. I didn't find out until later it was because my father was having a stroke from drinking too much and was making sure I didn't finish taking a bath before the paramedics arrived. My friend's uncle wanted me and my friend to model clothes for a catalog. I didn't go but later discovered that store didn't and never had sold clothing. Turned out he was a pedophile and had been sexually abusing my friend for years. I think we were 8 or 9 at the time. My mom passed away when I was 5 from breast cancer. When we were at service at our church. My dad. Sisters and I were walking the front pew and everyone was being so nice. When the pastor started talking. Everyone around me started crying. Especially my dad. I remember wondering why they are all crying. And when it didn't stop. I just joined in. I didn't get why we were crying. And thought my mom was just at the hospital resting like she had been so many times before. There used to be this man that would live at my house when I was about 3-5ish named Skip. And whenever I would walk by him he would ask me you wanna see my sexy leg to which I would always respond yes enthusiastically. He would then roll up his pant leg really high and rub his thigh up and down while dog whistling. At the time I thought it was effing hilarious. Well. Turns out he was my dad's meth dealer who needed a place to stay because he was being investigated for murder. My mom used to give me enemas when I misbehaved. I didn't realize until I made a joke about it during my first semester of college and everyone looked at me in stunned silence that it was not a normal punishment. There's so many to choose from. But one that sticks out is mum and dad constantly falling asleep on the couch when they were really on the nod from doing smack. Great way to leave a 6 year old and a newborn baby. My parents fighting all night followed by my dad packing a bag. Getting in his car. My mom standing in front of the car so he could leave. Then threatening divorce every other day and then being all over each other on their good days I has no idea what a healthy relationship was until my husband and I went to marriage counseling and I saw how toxic that all was and how much it stuck. My mom would hide me in the trunk of our car while she drove around at night looking for my dad at his favorite bars. She would eventually find him. They would be yelling. And one I peeked out the back window and saw what I now realize was my dad and a nasty prostitute. For your information. My mom dragged me along because she couldn't leave me home alone. My parents couldn't pick me up from school on time and I wasn't allowed to walk home so I'd just sit in the cold for hours on the pavement waiting always happened so didn't know any better. Was constantly scared of my older brother and how he might behave thought this was just how older brothers are. He'd make me leave the house for 8 hours when he was supposed to be looking after me while my parents were gone. We lived in a pretty rural area and other than going to a shop to buy sweets there is nothing to do for more than an hour told me I'd understand when I was older. I still don't understand. Growing up. Every summer we would pick apples at the local orchard. Lots of apples. Would keep some but most just went to the orchard. I always thought it was just a fun time out. Would pick up apples give them dad to put in his picking bag. See how shiny you could one. Or throw the rotten ones around. 20 plus years later it finally occurred to me that it was a little weird so I asked my dad about it. He looked straight at me and quietly said. With 5 kids we needed money. I would save my vacation at work and we would pick apples for the extra money. My parents worked their butts off to provide for us. Make enough money to pay for half of our university educations. And save for retirement. All the while making it fun. Not really traumatic but eye opening for me. Huge respect for mom and dad. My best friend at the time and I used to live in this small country town. Everybody knew everyone and it was quiet. Not much happening around town any time of the year. 
One day my friend and I were walking up and down the street picking berries off trees when I had to wee so I hurried home. Three or four houses down from where we were was my home. And went about my business. I must have got distracted by my barbies on the way back because about 20 minutes later my best friend came running back to my house. Her thighs covered in blood. Turned out that our neighbor those few houses up was a pedophile and tried ripping her in his backyard. She was being too loud so he covered her mouth but she struggled her way out somehow from his grasp. Crawling down the driveway he caught her. Shoved gravel up her vagina and let her go. I still remember my mum and her mum calling the police and looking like they had just witnessed a murder. My friend is doing fine now and lives happy life after many years in therapy and has gone on to marry a very lovely man too. When I was 5. I was home alone. I found a box of matches and brought them to my room. I burned a piece of paper on my carpeted floor. Creating scorch mark in my room. Fortunately. There wasn't a fire. When my dad and stepmom got home. They had put me in the bathtub for a bath. My stepmom was enraged. She grabbed a lighter from her pocket. Then she grabbed my hand. She placed my hand onto an ignited flame for roughly 5-10 seconds. Memory is hazy. But I remember. My mother had to regularly go on rescue missions to stop my grandmother from killing herself. I would get phone calls saying I'm on the way to grandma's again. Being 16 and finding out that I was the only one of my peers in that class who was still being beaten by their parents regularly. The oldest anyone was the last time they were physically punished was 10 years younger than I was the night before, the last time I was beaten. As a kid. I used to brag about being able to sleep for over 24 hours straight to friends or teachers or really whoever would listen. I was mid-sentence mentioning it as a freshman in college when I realized my divorced father was drugging preschool me with cold meds so I'd sleep through his weekends of custody with me. It really effed up my sense of reality for a while. When it was my weekend with my dad I would be dropped off at people's houses and I thought it was fun because it was all so different and got to meet new people. When I got older I realized it was neglect and he was palming me off while he went elsewhere. My parents drove us 200 miles across the country so they could bed swap with another couple they met online. We were locked in a bedroom at night with their children. I'm sure there are others but I'm waiting till therapy starts to dig them up. My father and I had a game when I was a child. Help daddy remember what hospital he went to last. My father was mentally ill. And would hurt himself up asleep to get more anxiety. Antipsychotic and pain drugs. There were 5 hospitals within a 2 hour drive of us and in those days, early 90s late 80s, there were no computer systems to track him like there is now. He would literally, break his own fingers, burn himself with oil, anything to get what he needed. And it was my job to help him remember. So he wouldn't get caught. After he took his life when I was 12, I had a lot of feelings and scary memories to deal with. It's been a long hard road. But I hope wherever his is, he's not in pain anymore. My ex stepdad shot me almost point blank w a pellet gun. The same night. He tricked me into stepping on what remains of a firework. He laughed. And laughed. Like it was hilarious as I was sobbing. Still got the pellet gun scar. One time my dad threw a temper tantrum and threw a plate full of food at the ceiling because my mom hadn't gotten the right sauce. I thought it was funny at the time but looking back that's an awful way for an adult to act. When I was around 8 my best friend at the time used to steal bad food from her pantry and we'd go into her room and she'd then explain to me how we had to be skinny. Because being skinny my boys would like us and so she would then meticulously read the backs of the cookie packs and count out every cookie and how many calories they were for each of us. She also was obsessed with shaving all her body and would try and pressure me into shaving my legs and arms. Once again. Boys like it when you were hairless. I never really grasped how bizarre it was for 8 year olds to count calories and be hairless for boys. Years later my primary school had a national scandal where 10-12 year olds were sexually abusing each other on the mat during class. At lunchtime and well any opportunity they had. I can remember lots of peer pressure for kids to finger each other and make out because that meant you were cool and liked by the hot boys. I was very fortunate to not be involved looking back it honestly so effed up. 
don't know if any of it was related but just from 7-12 it was quite gross. My dad going to the bar every night and only got to see him when he was drunk or not at all. Always had a plate of dinner saved for him. He would usually scream at my sisters and mother if he did get home early enough. On a side note. Reading this post is sad as f. I though that whenever a kid got home late it was normal for them to be locked outside for the night. Also thought an appropriate response to not doing your chores was to be locked in a closet without food. My younger siblings never got this treatment. I just thought I was an extra or full child. One weird example was when my older brother and I asked for Digim and starter decks for Christmas. But my mom and her boyfriend only had money for one for my brother. I got some cheap squirt guns or something. My mama had to leave for whatever reason and I was pouting. My mom's boyfriend asked me what was wrong and I told him I didn't get a Digimon deck. He went over to my brother and asked him if that was true. My brother looked scared and said yes. All I remember is him hitting my brother all over and my brother screaming. Trying to crawl away while he dragged him by his legs from the living room into the kitchen hitting him all over. Then I remember him throwing him an ice pack. It was normal cause we were beat all the time and it only seemed fair he should get beat real bad since he got the Digimon deck but... I didn't. Went to pick up my uncle at a crack house when I was like 11. People sprawled out everywhere. Some lady was on the couch sleeping naked. Me and my cousins were just snickering cause we got to see boobies. My mom taught me how to swim by pretty much drowning me in the ocean. Every time I'd cry she'd go deeper in the water a damp. Just let me go. Leaving me to go under until I basically learned how to swim by saving myself from drowning. I always thought I was just being a brat because I cried so it was justified. But it caused me to refuse to ever go into deep water and damp. I had to reteach myself how to swim for pleasure in my mid-twenties.